Hi guys, welcome to the Amanda and Rich Show. This video is part three of our three-part series on cars, strategies, and techniques. In this video, we're going to be focusing mainly on how to answer the questions, and I'm going to kind of go over what types of things to be thinking about and what strategies you can use when you're answering different types of questions. All right, so we're gonna go through these questions. If you did not see uh, part two, some of the things I say might be a little confusing just because I'm kind of using some of the main ideas that um, we developed by reading through the passage in our video number two. You might just wanna quickly skim through that. All right, so let's read this first question. Which of the following is an assumption that underlies the author's attempt to raise an alarm about SSRIs? So this question is asking us about an assumption. When I first did this question, I got it wrong because I forgot that the question was asking me for an assumption. And if you forget that, there's a really easy way to get this question wrong. So whenever um, a question asks for an assumption, it's asking for something that was not explicitly said in the passage but would have to be, I guess, true in order for something that the author actually did say to be true. Now let's just kind of quickly remind ourselves without going back to the passage, because if we were actively reading, we should remember what the author said about SSRIs. We remember that he said they're only useful if they're helping the person gain control over their emotions again, right? That was kind of an idea we were going with. And so now we need an assumption that would have to be true in order for what he said to be true. Now these questions always confuse me um, because it's kind of like you need to develop some sort of reasoning in your head. So I like to come up with almost like a really basic equation that I either write on my scrap paper or I just keep in my head, whatever you know works best and whatever I have time for. But so like an easy equation would be here that unhappiness plus SSRIs equals human dignity, right? If we have unhappiness and then we use SSRIs to get rid of that unhappiness and to get control of our emotions, we're using human dignity. So that's kind of a simple equation. Unhappiness plus SSRIs equals human dignity. It's not 100% correct, but it's an easy way to kind of remember that and just like lay it out in our brains. So that was a lot of work um, just focusing on the question without even reading the answer choices. Again, when you're on the actual exam and the more you practice this, those things will come so quickly to you that you won't be using this much time up, but I'm just kind of trying to slow it down and break it down for you guys to make sure, you know, hopefully you get a better understanding of it. So with that in mind, let's read the choices. Choice one, the use of SSRIs is totally unsafe. Okay, we can even eliminate this choice just based on our main idea of the passage. The use of SSRIs is totally unsafe. Do you guys remember in our previous video we talked about the sub main idea where we said the author thinks that the use of SSRIs is okay in certain instances. Therefore, this is kind of going against one of our main ideas or sub main ideas. So if a choice is against what the main idea was, that's usually not the best choice. So we can almost eliminate this um, already. Another reason to eliminate this choice, if you're not completely convinced by that first argument, is choices with really um, extreme words, like totally, um, usually are not correct. It's not a 100% method that's going to get you the correct answer every time, but very rarely are choices with extreme wording correct in the car section. So I'm kind of going to go ahead and say this probably isn't the answer, but I want to keep reading and we're not going to eliminate it yet. Next choice. Experiencing some unhappiness is necessary in order to have dignity. Okay, so let's pause. Was this explicitly said? Did he ever say that you need to be unhappy in order to have dignity? No, he didn't really say that. But let's see. If this was true, would it make sense that um, SSRIs are useful in helping someone reclaim their dignity, let's think back to our equation. We said unhappiness plus SSRIs equals dignity. So this is saying some unhappiness 
is necessary in order to have dignity. Okay, that kind of is starting to make a little sense. I'm not 100% convinced, but if you think about it, our equation does have unhappiness in it, so it kind of needs to be there in order to use the SSRIs in order to get dignity. I don't know if this is like too far-fetched or if I'm explaining it well enough, um, but let's just leave it because I think that that's definitely a better option than the first choice. So we're kind of just going to leave that and we'll read the other two. Maybe we can do a process of elimination here. Choice number three. Happiness drugs are useful when used by people who are dominated by despair. Okay. This is kind of true, right? Because we remember him saying this. This was his, his opinion about SSRIs. They're useful if someone is dominated by unhappiness. But what did we say? This is why you have to really read the question and understand it. It's asking for an assumption, which is something that's not explicitly said. We know he explicitly said this. This was part of his main idea. So while this choice is extremely tempting, it's not answering our question, right? And actually, and I forgot what the question was asking when I was first doing this. I chose this one and got the answer wrong because I forgot that it was asking for an assumption. So that's really key. So we can kind of eliminate this choice and we're kind of still sticking with B right now. But let's read the last choice just in case. Definitions of happiness are the same from culture to culture. Um, so you're, this is not explicitly stated. He doesn't really say anything about happiness being the same from culture to culture. But he doesn't really mention any sort of comparison between cultures at all. This is almost a choice that is too random, not very relevant, and too far-fetched. So out of all the choices we're going to go with B. So it's kind of like there were two ways to answer this question. You kind of could have done process of elimination or you could have used that equation that we came up with that unhappiness plus SSRIs equals dignity. And then you'd kind of realize that choice B is probably the best answer. So let's check it. And that was right. Let's go to the next question. What is a function of the phrase, hence they are considered to be devoid of human dignity, in paragraph 1? The question is literally asking us something about paragraph 1. So in that sense, I would go back to my thinking and I would say, what was the main idea of paragraph 1? The main idea was that drug-induced happiness violates human dignity. Choice number 1. It is building up to the argument that SSRIs are completely unethical. All right, so what do we know about words like completely and totally? Not so good, right? They're extreme. So this is like not the best choice already in my head. But there's another reason I can rationalize why it's not the best choice. We said SSRIs can have certain benefits. So he's not completely against them. And he doesn't really um, touch upon ethics. So again, there, this choice just really isn't that good. It's bringing in SSRIs, which aren't even mentioned in paragraph one, which the question is focusing on. It has really extreme language. It talks about ethics, which wasn't really mentioned all that much in the passage. So I can kind of safely say this probably isn't it, but let's keep reading. It is building up to the argument that drug-induced happiness is necessary. Okay, if you know the main idea, you know this probably isn't correct. Again, necessary is really extreme. And it's against the main idea of that paragraph, so probably not that choice either. Let's look into the next choice. It is a logical step in an attempt to explain the relationship between human dignity and drug-induced happiness. So we kind of got lucky here because this is literally what we said before we even read the choices. We said, main idea of paragraph one, drug-induced happiness violates human dignity. This choice is looking really awesome, but you always want to read all the choices, especially if you have time. So let's read the last one. It is a logical step in an attempt to explain the relationship between organic happiness and drug-induced happiness. Again, this one could be kind of tricky. You might fall into a trap of wanting to choose this answer because it's very similar to this one, but you have to ask yourself, was there ever really um, the comparison between organic happiness and drug-induced happiness? Not really. He didn't create that distinction. So it's a little bit far-fetched and out of the scope of the passage. So we're going to go with choice C. And it worked out. Let's see the next question. One of the author's central arguments is that a life of dignity is a life free from... 
All right, so question is asking the author's central argument. This is like the easiest question because we already know the main idea. So before reading the choices, before getting confused by the choices, we're going to say, what was the main idea of this passage? The main idea of the passage was that someone with dignity is someone who can control their own emotions, someone that is not dominated by one emotion or another, right? All right, let's read the choices. Domination by a sense of happiness. Okay, that's pretty good. You know, it's not wrong. That was part of it. Um, we'll keep reading, but I'm not really sure that the main idea was specific to happiness, right? He kind of went back and forth between happiness and unhappiness. But let's leave it for now. Next choice. Domination by a sense of unhappiness. Okay, same thing. And he talks about both. So we kind of know that one can't be more correct over the other because he talks about both. Someone who's dominated by happiness or dominated by unhappiness is going to be left with no dignity regardless of whether it's happy or unhappy. So next choice. Domination by either a sense of happiness or unhappiness. Um, this is actually looking pretty good, right? Because that's exactly what our main idea was, and it's combining the two first choices, and it's kind of not discriminating against, you know, one or the other. It's combining both. So I really like this one, but let's read the last choice. Um, a life of dignity is a life free from drug use. That is not really 100% correct, because if you remember your sub-main idea, he wasn't completely against drug drug use in some senses. So not really the best choice. Let's go at C. All right, let's do the last question. It can be inferred from the passage that the author believes that SSRIs are dot dot dot. So what is the author's belief about SSRIs? Again, we know this. This is our sub main idea. It was that they're useful in certain situations as long as it's temporary and as long as it's helping someone gain control over their emotions and helping them towards gaining dignity. So let's read the choices. Should be used to provide temporary relief from despair. Okay, that's pretty close, right? That's pretty close to what we just said. Temporary, right? So it's not, you know, going to last forever. And it's helping them get over this despair. It's helping them gain back their control of their emotions. So I'm kind of liking this one, but again, you should always read the other choices. There might be a better one. Choice B, are completely unnatural. Okay, there's that word again, completely. It's really extreme, not the best, and that wasn't his opinion on it, right? He wasn't um, very black and white about his opinion. He said SSRIs are useful in some senses, so he's not going to say something like they're completely unnatural. So I'm going to eliminate B. Next choice. Result in gross distortions of reality. Um, did he ever really speak of reality in the passage? Not really. He was kind of constantly talking about dignity and um, domination by unhappiness and happiness, but he never really focused on reality. I would kind of say this doesn't really go along with the passage. It's a little random. I still like A better. Let's read the last choice. Should be illegal. This one kind of goes along with choice B. Um, if he's supporting them in some sense, he's not going to outright claim that they should be illegal. It just doesn't go with that main idea, sub-main idea we developed. So I think this is the best choice. And there we go. So again, this is just a method that really worked for me. It's not going to work for everyone. It's really simple and it's kind of easy to implement. You just have to make sure you're understanding the question and you just have to read carefully and make sure you're using the main idea that you developed in the passage when you were reading through to help answer the question. Also, it's good to look out for those extreme words that we talked about because a lot of the time they're not going to be a part of the answer. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful. Again, CARS is kind of a hard thing to give advice for because I feel like there's a lot of different ways you can interpret things. I hope that this helps someone out there. You guys can leave a comment if you're interested in seeing more passages like this or if there's a specific question on another passage that you want help with. Um, definitely leave a comment below. Um, and until next time, we'll see you guys in the next video.